Guys, here is what we are going to do today. Um, we are going to do a lot of work using what we call spreadsheet programs. Probably the two that you may have heard of are either Microsoft Excel, which is a Microsoft product, or Google Sheets, which is a Google product. There's also some other freebies out there that are a little bit lesser known. Um, we are all probably going to use Google Sheets because that's the one we all have access to, and it runs on a Chromebook real well. And unless you have a reason why you can't use Google Sheets, I would prefer that you did. Um, my personal preference is Microsoft Excel because it's what I learned on and it's what I'm used to. But because we all have access to Google Sheets, I've slowly been over the course of the last couple of years learning. So we just want to do an introductory lesson on how to do a spreadsheet program. And probably the easiest way to do that is just to make a spreadsheet out of our measuring and metrics data. Okay, so. If you don't have this sheet in front of you and you don't know where to find Google Sheets on your computer, especially after I show it to you here in a second, um, stop the video and figure that out, including coming back into the meeting and having me help you. All right. So, five, four, three, two, one. All right, if I want to start a Google Sheet, if I am log I'm logged into my BVSD account, I've got my home screen, my Google home screen. I click on those brown or those nine dots right there. And I've got a whole bunch of apps, most of which I don't use, but they came with the program. I want to open a Google Sheet. And if I click on that guy, I get a new home screen that has a list of my sheets that are saved on my drive and maybe my computer. I'm not quite sure. But what I want to do is I want to open up a blank screen. Now, some of you guys are much better at this than others. As we've discussed before, I cannot make the assumption that anybody knows anything. So I always have to start at the beginning. Now, depending on your internet speed and your computer speed, you'll get the working thing. Eventually, you should end up with a screen like we have here. Now, over the course of the next couple spreadsheet lessons, of which we're going to do a few, I'm going to teach you a whole bunch of tricks of the trade. But for now, we're just going to start with the most basic stuff. OK, first things first. I want to make my screen bigger so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm typing. Maybe you want to do that as well. There's a couple of ways to do this. If I go up here, I can make this guy like 200. No, I don't want it to be that big. I can make it 150. Come on. You know what? I'm going to be fancy. I'm going to make it 175. I'm going to type in there. Nah, that might work. Might not. All right. The other thing you can do is you can actually just take, change the size of your entire screen with this menu right here. Okay. Um, Either way is good, but set up a set up a screen so you can see what you're doing. I'm actually gonna yeah, let me keep it at one seventy five. Okay. Terminology thing number two, or maybe number one. Not sure which. This box right here, and I will call it a box as often as not, but it's actually correctly referred to as a cell. That is a cell, and it has a cell address. And the cell address is A1. That cell right there is A2. 
that cell is B2, that cell is B1, that cell is D9. Okay. Always letter first, number second, or column first, row second how everybody talks about spreadsheets. So, in A1, we got one, two, three, four, five. We have five columns on our spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and put in the headings, okay? Eventually, we're gonna make this thing all pretty and we're gonna put our name on it and we're gonna get it all evenly spaced out maybe. But for now, let's just do the basics. So, column number one, is called container. Cool. All right, I'm gonna take my arrow key and I'm gonna click over to the right, or I could do the same thing with my mouse. All right. Mass of the empty container in grams. I want that to fit, so I'm going to take the of the out. Those are kind of extraneous words. So I'm going to go mass empty container in grams. Hmm. I would like that to fit in column B. I'm going to show you guys a trick, and I'm going to do this a couple times. If I go up here to B, it, the line between B and C, and I put my cursor right there, I get that double arrow thing going like that. If I go click, click, if I double click, it expands the column to encompass the words convenient. Okay, now if you get a little lost, I'm going to go over here to my undo key. Use the undo, undo key and then, oh, I screwed up. I'm going to undo. All right, so back to where we started. If I take my cursor and I put it over here and I go click, click, so I've got those double arrows. I go click, click, it expands the guy out. Cool. All right. So in this column right here, I've got mass, not m quas. What the heck did I just type there? Mass empty container. plus water. I'm going to cheat a little bit and abbreviate container so that I can fit the thing into the screen you guys are looking at. All right. That still doesn't fit. Let's put our cursor there and go, oh, wait, we want a unit in there too. That is measured in grams. Let's go click, click. Hey, behave yourself, computer. There we go. Massive container plus water. This is mass of water only. And that is in grams. Now, we could probably make the font a little smaller if we wanted to, but I'm not sure I want to work that hard. So I'm going to go click, click there. Hey, behave yourself. There we go. Got to fool around with a little bit. And then this guy right here is volume of the water. And the volume of the water is in milliliters. Ooh, I have an idea. 
I don't need a lot of room. I just need a little bit of room to fit it on the screen. Now I could make the, the thing smaller and go down to 150. But watch this, because Chucky's smart. 175. If you double click on the thing, then it'll expand the column. If we go over here between A and B, I bet it's going to make the column smaller. <laughs> Look at that. Now it fits. All right. So we've got all of our headings there. We've got our container. I think I'm going to have to cheat on the name of the containers because I don't want to expand my column out again. All right. So we've got our row, or we've got our headings across the top. Now let's do our guys. Let's see. So our first guy was a Petri dish. That is spelled like that. Petri dish. We have a graduated cylinder. I'm going to cheat and call that a grad sill. All right. We've got an Erlenmeyer flask. That was that weird shaped thing. I'm going to call that an Ur because I don't actually know how to spell Erlenmeyer anyway. I think it even has an E-H-R or something. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pretend that I'm abbreviating safe space, but I don't actually know how to spell Erlenmeyer. All right. Erlenmeyer flask. That guy was a beaker. I do know how to spell beaker. Because Beaker and Sesame Street. All right. And then finally, I had a styrofoam cup. Styrofoam. There. Sty. Sty er, styrofoam cup. Perfect. All right. So we've got. The container names, we've got our headings. We are doing good. Okay. Let's put in some numbers. All right. Stretch it out for a second. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. We got to have a conversation about numbers. Spreadsheets think about numbers three different ways. They think about numbers that they think are letters. They think about numbers that are just values, and they think about numbers that are doing math. Depending on what you want the spreadsheet to think about determines how you type in your numbers. Okay? Show you what I'm talking about here. So if we click on cell B2, the mass of the empty Petri dish was 3.17 grams. So I'm going to go 3.17. Now, if I type in that number, I'm just going to go down. Okay? It moved it over to the right side of the column. The spreadsheet says that is a value. Chucky typed in a number. He's moving on. All right. The graduated cylinder apparently weighed 25.71 grams. Okay? Now I'm going to do something slightly different with my 25.71. Instead of just putting it in like that, I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to undo. Okay? I'm going to type in 25.71, but instead of just hitting, hitting enter and just letting that be a value, I'm going to go ahead and put in the unit. I'm going to say, I want to be fancy, and I'm going to put in grams. And I think something's going to happen here. So if I click down to the next cell, it didn't move it over to the right side. Okay. If you put letters in with numbers, 
it confuses the spreadsheet. And what the spreadsheet basically says is the 25.71 is no longer a value. It's like a word. It's like, I'm nine years old, you know. If we type in, I am nine years old, a spreadsheet just thinks the nine in the sentence is just part of the sentence. So if you're going to want to do numbers only, you want to not get in the habit of putting in the units, which is one of the reasons why we put the unit in the top of the column. Okay, so I can go enter, I can drop to the next column, but that guy went over there. Okay, let's fill up this column. 41.17 beaker 10.91 styrofoam cup 1.40 hmm. I hate it that it did that all of these guys are now to the hundreds place and this guy's to the tenth place. I would love to say that I did this intentionally so I could have this discussion, but that's not actually what happened. It just worked out that way. Okay. If I want to make my numbers be, we'll just call them pretty because that's the term I use. I want all of my numbers to be to the hundreds place. If I try putting in the zero again, stay. Nope. My spreadsheet's going to be fussy. Okay. Up here, you have a menu. Okay. These guys right here, decrease decimal place, increase decimal place. Let's see what happens if I increase decimal place. Well, nothing, because it's only increasing the decimal place on that cell right there. I want to do it for all of my cells. All right, watch what I can do here. I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on column B. And it highlights that. So now it's saying we're going to do something to the whole column. Good. I want to increase decimal place. Whoa, it just made all of my numbers go to the thousands place. Let's make them really, really accurate. Look, Mr. Shoop, I measured something to the hundred millionth place. No, you didn't. You only measured it to the hundreds place. So that's decreased decimal place. All right. So all of our numbers were measured to the hundreds place because that's what my balance read. But now we have all of the guys are like that. Cool, yeah. So go ahead and stop the video. And here's what I want you to do. <laughs> Bad order of operations. Here's what I want you to do. And then we're gonna stop the video. All right. I want you to fill in column C, and I want you to fill in column E. Remember, D was the calculated column. We're going to talk about that in a second. So I want you to fill in the numbers for column C, and I want you to fill in the numbers for column E, and I want everything to read to the hundreds place, even though column E, that's not really that accurate. We're going to talk about that in a second. So make everything to the hundreds place, and then... Come back onto the video. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, I'm going to do this real quick. We got 20.39. We got 39.44. We got 97.53. We got 136.86. And we got 122.19. All right. Those guys, because none of them have a zero in the end, 
are all just to the hundreds place. So life is good. Now our volume of the water, the piece of equipment that we are actually using um, was probably most logically read to the tenths place. But we're going to cheat a little bit just to make everything to the hundreds place. But I'm going to go 18.5 because that's the number that I had. 14.5, 56.6. Got 128.8. I think that's those numbers added together. And we've got 124. And that ended up being a point zero. So watch, I bet it's actually even going to drop it off. It's just going to do it to 124. Yeah. Okay. So my C guys are all to the hundreds place. But my E guys, I want to highlight the column. So I click on the letter E. And I go up here. And I'm going to increase the decimal place. Now, we're going to talk about why this is kind of cheating down the road. But for now, we just want everything to be consistent. Okay. Stretch. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So, we've talked about numbers that are values, which are all of our numbers here. We've talked about numbers that the spreadsheet think are letters. Now let's talk about spreadsheet math. The mass of the water only was a calculated number. Okay. I am going to do the math incorrectly in the spreadsheet a bunch of different ways and i'm going to show you guys how to do it correctly in a couple of different ways so if we want to get the mass of the water only for the petri dish we did 20.39 minus 3.17 Okay, so I'm going to actually try and type that into my spreadsheet and see what happens. 20.39 minus 3.17. And you should maybe do the same just to see what happens. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, now, if this is the calculator, I hit enter to see what happens. Nothing happened. It said 20.39 minus 3.17. It actually didn't even move it over to the right side of the column. I think the spreadsheet thinks that that's like words. It's not going to do anything with it. OK, now watch this. Chucky knows spreadsheets. All right. I'm going to go back up to my column, and I'm going to go up here. This is called the formula bar, by the way, if you really want to be fancy. In a spreadsheet, a search bar on, on a, a web browser is called the formula bar on a spreadsheet. Okay, So we go up to the formula bar, and we could probably do the same thing here. But... There is a command in spreadsheets, which is basically equals. If you put equals in front of a mathematical operation, in this case, we're just doing simple subtraction. If you put equals in front of a mathematical operation, you're telling the spreadsheet, hey, spreadsheet, I want you to do some math. So I put an equal sign in here and something happened. My numbers even change the way they look. So the spreadsheet saying something is amiss here. So now I'm going to hit enter and look at that. It did the math. Okay. So now I've got 17.22. Now if I go back here and I click on that box, 
my answer is right here. But my formula, oh, the formula bar has the formula. I love that. The formula bar has the formula. There's the answer. Okay? So now if I wanted to do that math right there, instead of typing in 39.44 minus 25.71. I'm trying to see if I can get the equal sign into the bar right there. I might be able to. I think I can get an equal sign in there, but that might be more hassle than it's worth. Let's see if that works. Oh, that seems to work. Okay. Cool. Okay, so now I can do the same thing down here. All right, let's go. Equals 97.53. You know what? I'm sick of typing i'm going to show you guys a trick now for real for real thing the first time i saw this i was either i was like a freshman or a sophomore in college i was at the university of colorado and down in the basement of the geology lab i was taking a geology course they put in a computer lab and it was the first time that I had access to a computer that had a spreadsheet. And our professor gave us a little lesson in how to use this thing. And the first time I saw this, I went, mind blown. This is going to save me so much work. Yep. Yeah. All right. The nice thing about a spreadsheet, and by the way, you can always take a break. You want Pause the video. Go get some Cocoa Puffs. Come on back. We're good. All right. Um, the nice thing about a spreadsheet is if you format it correctly, it will do math over and over again. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to do this correctly, but it's going to be a little confusing, and I'm going to show you why it's confusing. So... We've learned some stuff. We've learned that equals will make the thing do math. So we're going to go equals and instead of typing in the numbers, I'm going to type in the address of the cells. We want to go C1. Whoa. No, we don't. We want to go C2 there. Because if I type in C1, I didn't do that intentionally. Um, if I type in C1, it just highlights the headings column. If I type in C2, it highlights the number that I want to deal with. And I want to, instead of doing 20.39, I'm going to show you why I don't want to do this here in a second. I'm going to take C2, and I'm going to subtract 3.17. But instead of saying 3.17, I'm going to say B2. And it went ahead and highlighted that. The spreadsheets are smart. The original spreadsheet way back in the day when I was doing it did not do all of this stuff. But that was a long time ago. 30 years? more than 30 almost 40 years that's okay all right so now i've got equals c2 minus b2 so i'm putting in the addresses and i click equals and i get 17.22 which is the answer on our sheet now here's the groovy part I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to click on that guy again. You may need to rewind 
Um, I'll do this a couple of times, but this is this is kind of the trick of this whole lesson. All right. So I clicked back up on my box. Down here in the lower right hand corner is a little tiny rectangle. And I'm going to do what I call grab that rectangle. I'm going to put my cursor on there and it turns into a plus sign. I don't know if that's intentionally a plus sign, but that's what it is on my computer. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to do what's called drag the column. Okay. So it highlights the next four boxes, sort of. It sort of outlines them. You guys might not be able to see that in my recording, but I click on that guy. I grab my little rectangle box and I pull down to get the next four things. Now, if I let go of the right click button, it fills it in with a bunch of numbers. Again, now if you compare those numbers to the numbers on our sheet, what it basically did is it did that guy minus that guy and that guy minus that guy and that guy minus that guy and it's that guy minus that guy. It repeated the mathematical operation over and over again. Okay. So I'm going to do this whole thing over again. Okay. I'm going to take all of those numbers out. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I'm going to go equals. And I'm going to go C2 minus B2 equals. Cool. Now, it dropped my cursor down to the next box. So I'm going to pop up there, and I'm going to click on that guy again. And I'm going to do that. By the way, I don't know why that guy. Is anything. Um, cool. Okay. Now. And you take a mental break. Take a mental break for a second. I'm going to take the guys out of here, and I'm going to do this incorrectly because I've taught spreadsheets lots and lots of times. And here's one of the things that confuses students. So instead of clicking in the addresses of the box, I'm going to actually put in the numbers. So I'm going to go equals 20.39 minus 3.17. And I'm going to hit enter. And because spreadsheets are smart, I got 17.22. Now, if I go over here and I drag the column, I don't think it's going to work. Dang. It's 17.22 every single time. Because what we told the computer to do, what we told the spreadsheet to do, wasn't repeat the addresses. We told it to repeat the math. That didn't work as well. Okay, Because here is both the joy and until you get used to it, kind of the nuisance of spreadsheets. If you want it to repeat the operation over and over again, you want to do it with the address of the cells. So we're going to go equals C2 minus B2. And if we've got the address of the cells, then it's going to repeat the mathematical operation over and over again. Now, I'm going to stop in just a second because we're going to continue this discussion tomorrow. So don't turn this in yet. Some of you guys are going, well, Mr. Shoup, if you just click on the boxes, then it puts in the address automatically. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. 
So this should be saved on your drive. Okay. Um, if you need help saving it, because if we went back and did this again, it wouldn't take very long. But I am going to go ahead and give it a name just to make sure. I'm going to call this Chucky's Spreadsheet. Okay. Last edit was seconds ago. And I'm going to close this guy out. And I want to see if this guy is saved in my drive. So let me, since I closed out that window, open up a new window. There it is. Chucky's spreadsheet right there. Okay. So what we're going to do first thing tomorrow is we're going to make this spreadsheet all nice and pretty. But I think we have enough background information for now. Okay.